This is not your typical horror game. There are no chase sequences, useless arbitrary tasks, or overwhelming gore. In this video, I'll show you what makes my horror game One Socket unique, and how it has evolved over the past year from a very basic game jam entry to my first commercial Steam game release. I'll also be sharing what parts of the process I did well and what parts were more difficult. So it all started with One Socket. One Socket to rule them all. This is that one. one socket. But how did I come up with the idea of one socket? Well, the story is actually quite fascinating. I was getting ready for bed and looking for the socket to plug my phone charger in. But there was a problem. The lamp was already connected and thus I had to unplug the lamp to charge my phone. This unique situation gave me an idea. What if this could be turned into a cool game mechanic? This idea would prove itself useful a few months later when I decided to enter a game jam contest with the theme limited space. This was the perfect opportunity for me to make this one socket mechanic into a reality. But how would a silly mechanic like this be turned into a game? Well, it's quite simple really. Only having one socket creates a natural limitation. You have to choose what you want to be powered by that socket. You want to have vision, but also progress in the game. Both these things can only happen through the one socket that we have access to. Having this limitation combined with limited resources, alongside a simple but effective game loop, we get a very natural sense of horror. The game loop itself follows this structure. You charge the generator, look out for the monster and scare it away and completing actions that will lead you to eventually escaping. But these are not the only things that make One Socket unique. Further into the video, I'll reveal more elements that make this game so horrifying. The initial reception of this game jam entry was very positive, and I saw potential in the game idea. It had the ability to stand out from the rest, so I decided that this could be turned into a full game release. But with this decision came more challenges. How would I expand the game? Should I focus more on making the existing level more replayable? following the style of FNAF 1, where each night would get increasingly difficult, or take a more linear approach, kind of like Sister Location, where each level provides unique challenges. Well, the nature of how level 1 works wouldn't quite fit with making it more replayable, due to the structure of the level. You only have a hallway to look down into and only one monster. It would get repetitive and boring quickly if you would just do the same thing over and over again. The reason FNAF 1 works is because it has lots of varied threats. The cameras make it so so you have more environments to look at. It doesn't get boring as quickly. So, a linear experience it will be. This meant that I needed to make a second level that would build on the knowledge the player had gained from the first level. To accomplish this, my thought would be to have the player solve puzzles in order to escape. But now the next problem was that I had no clue how to make good puzzles. Two months, a lot of research and developing later, and level two was finally done. I let playtesters play it and there were loads of problems with it. The level was too difficult, the monster was not scary, and it was frustrating. Balancing issues like these were very common throughout the development process, and it is something I really struggled with getting right. One of the reasons for this is because I'm challenging several skills of the player. Jonas Tyroller explains it well in this video. He recommends only aiming to challenge one of these skills. You might already notice the problem here. One Socket challenges all the skills at the same time, and it is a nightmare to balance. However, when this balance is right, there's a big payout. Players have to stay immensely focused on keeping track of several things at once. The generator that has a limited amount of charge, forgetting about it will literally leave you powerless. It is another big part of what makes the horror in one socket so unique. So at this point, the game had two levels, and I had about four months of development time left. Now I had another difficult decision to make. Do I begin developing a third level, or do I add more environments and narrative aspects? Well, having highly intense game playing for the entire game would get tiring quickly, and that could be fixed by adding environments that didn't feel as threatening as the levels. This would make the player be able to recharge and calm down after the very intense level, and make the next level more intense in comparison. These environments would also be good for supplying the game with more story elements, which help make players feel more immersed in the game and part of the world. So, in conclusion, I should prioritize making the narrative aspects first, as if those were left out, it would be bad for the game. I could always make the third level when these story elements were done, but unfortunately, in the end, there was not enough time to make level 3. But this might change in the future, I might make a sequel if the game ends up performing well. So buy one socket, the full game is available to buy from today on Steam. Do you have what it takes to escape? So I had the general structure of the game finished, but, but there was still a very important part that was missing. The horror part of the horror game. The monster at this time did not look scary at all. The face was too round and smooth and looked too happy, while the hands were still from the original jam version and 
looked like sausages. The jump scare was also very bad and disappointing. This was all fixed by reworking the entire model and jump scare from scratch, which initially didn't look very well, but in the end I got a spooky looking result. Oh, and this new jump scare? Well, it is very important to the gameplay, as it is the losing state of the game. It is what makes you feel pressure while you're playing, as you don't want to lose the valuable progress you've made. I talk more about this improved monster in this video. The environments in the two levels also looked empty and bad at this point. The first level needed some extra details like scratches and stains on the wall, while the second second level needed a more extensive rework. I extended the space above and below the player so I could populate those areas with visual detail to make the environment around the player more interesting and spooky. A common thing that would happen during the process of making this game was taking it all one step at a time. Only after finishing a certain task, I would start thinking about what I should do next. I found this to be a very bad way of doing things. It would have been a lot better if I had a structured plan and vision right from the start. The reason I took it one step at a time was partly because I was so focused on player feedback. I wanted to know what you thought of the game and then take the next necessary steps. Although an iterative process like this was good, I could have had a more balanced approach between incorporating player feedback with a structured plan. This iterative approach also made me dismiss the importance of having an accurate representation of how the level might look like in the final version. Sure, it was at a playable state throughout the whole development process, but it didn't look polished or show the final aesthetics of the level. If I had a vertical slice sooner, I could have put a demo up on Steam earlier and gathered more traffic and interest towards it. Remember, this video greatly simplifies the whole process, but I hope I gave you an idea of the necessary steps I took to get this end result. It is incredibly difficult to make a game, but the process this was so rewarding and I learned a lot. I'll be working on making my next game next. If you like this video, I'd recommend you watch this one. Thank you for watching.